simple 3D space with Forge. The tool palette's line tool is the primary tool used to create polygons, which are the building blocks of all marathon maps. After selecting the line tool, we'll position the cursor over one of the dark vertices on the grid. Now, clicking and holding down the mouse button, we'll drag the cursor, and you'll notice the cursor is now being trailed by a line, to the dark vertex one world unit below the first vertex. Once the cursor is over the second vertex, we can release the mouse button, and we'll see the first side of our upcoming polygon. We'll just repeat this procedure three times to make an enclosed outline of a square. Now, the most important step. We have to tell Forge that we want the outline to be a polygon. This is done with the Fill tool. Once we've selected it, we simply click on the inside of our square and it fills with white, making it a valid space in the 3D world. But one polygon does not a level make. Before we can see what our 3D world looks like, we'll need to add at least one more adjacent polygon and a player. Using the Line tool, we can attach new lines extending from the existing vertices, like this. After we've created these lines, we'll need to use the Fill tool to activate them. A blue line will appear where the polygons are joined. Next, we'll select the Tool Palette's Skull, which is actually the Object tool, and click on one of the polygons. When confronted with this dialog box, we can select Player from the Group menu and adjust the direction which the Marine is facing. We now have a small 3D space we can explore. Select Visual from the View menu and we're treated to a field of white. But don't be fooled, the level is right there in front of us, waiting for us to paint on some textures. We'll just select a nice wall texture from the texture palette and click, and our world starts to take shape. In visual mode, you can use the numeric keypad to move around just as you do in Marathon. Notice that when we hold down the Option key, the cursor changes to an eyedropper. This allows us to select any wall texture we see without going to the palette, and the next wall we click on will have that texture. If we don't like the placement of the texture, we can change it simply by holding down the command key while we click on the wall. The texture will move with the mouse. We can also change the height of the floor and the ceiling of any polygon in this mode. All we need to do is press caps lock and click on the floor or ceiling we want, and then it will move up and down with the mouse. We can also assign walls, ceilings, and floors a variety of attributes in visual mode. For instance, we can make the lights on the ceiling pulsate back and forth. And I can also assign lighting values from among 20 presets. And I can create my own light types, but we'll get to that a bit later. Now that we've experimented with our first 3D space, we need to review a few simple rules for making polygons. Firstly, no polygon can have any concave angles within it, i.e. no angles greater than 180 degrees. Larger rooms, like the one we just made, must be created with multiple polygons. If you create a polygon with a concave angle, it will not fill. If you modify an existing polygon and make it concave, diagonal red lines will appear in the fill. Secondly, a polygon can have a maximum of eight vertices. Thirdly, polygons can only be attached to one another if they share vertices. Adjacent polygons will act as an expansion of the floor, allowing the player to see and walk to that polygon, so long as the floor and ceiling heights are compatible. Finally, polygons that overlap each other cannot be attached to each other. 
interestingly enough, it is actually possible for two polygons to share the same physical space, but you'll be unable to see any evidence of the intersection in either polygon. Now, if you're at all familiar with 5D space, you'll know what I mean.